Hello, everybody. Welcome to Aka and Claire Pod. <laughs> We're excited to be here. We've been married for four years and we've been together for seven or nine. This number keeps fluctuating. <laughs> Isn't it nine? I think it's nine. Yeah. So we have been doing vlogging. We've been creating content as lovers, as married couples um, forever. And, you know, we just felt like we needed to share our stories with the world. So if this is the first time you're listening to us or watching us, you're welcome. People love us and we love the content we create because we feel like it helps people basically do better and know better in relationships. One of the things that we know how to do well is be honest and we like to be authentic to ourselves, our true stories. We don't make things up. But yeah, welcome to Akan Claire Pod. If you're watching on YouTube, you're literally watching the short version. It's 20 minutes, but you can go on our podcast, Spotify, Apple. You can listen to the entire thing. We started this because we felt like people love to see us when we are truly at our most vulnerable and our best is when we're talking together and we're honest with each other. We're being authentic. I almost called it the eavesdropper show. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Because they're going to be eavesdropping on us talking. Okay. Yeah. We need to find a space where we can talk, we can share, we can be truthful to each other. And you guys listen to how that plans out or plays out. Okay. So this particular topic we're going to be sharing, we haven't premeditated anything. So it's not scripted as usual. It's just us banting. And so I hope... Wow, Aka. I'm sorry. <laughs> so i hope i hope it goes well we actually attempted to do this didn't work out and we eventually we shot like four videos we shot four videos and we eventually had to ditch them all because quality premium content is what you deserve okay so we are back here doing it again and better yeah so the topic we're going to be talking about today is have we changed after the baby have you changed after the baby? I believe so. What has changed after the baby? Yeah, what has changed? <laughs> um, I think my body has changed. My sleep pattern has changed. My sensitivity has changed. My priorities has changed. <laughs> yeah, that's what I can think of right now. I think for me, um, I think most of my future plans financially have been heightened. So like I usually would say, okay, okay, okay. We can plan for future, but I can stall. But now like... I'm more anxious about the future anxious, financially, why? but I want to say it anxious as per the bad kind of anxious. But basically now I'm just literally like, Omo, we have to have this because I'm already thinking of like Gabby's school fund or Gabby has to have like money when she's grown, when we can give her, you know, so we're making plans towards that. Also thinking about old age for the both of us, like we have to be okay. <laughs> It's interesting that, you know, you're saying that because I, I don't get that vibe from you that you think that far off. I think you're a very like present person, but regarding like finances, yeah, maybe you think about Gabby's future school fees, but like, I don't think you <laughs> imagine like our old age and how we're going to leave because I'm like, how do I leave now? I'm thinking about now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's where the balance comes in because mm -hmm. to be honest like okay look, like you're saying you don't know if i do that and everything but I, i'm not just thinking about it i have actually made moves on it i mean you know about the insurance okay um which is on one end and then of course the plans to like invest for the future and i have several insurances for gabby school for old age for both of us and then the contingencies i don't want to say the, the name you know what it which is one? right tell me emergency <laughs> wow! Aka like said. Don't you dare. You know how they can be at the end of the day, man. We just need to plan, you know. Okay, in so companies. this question was more about like what has changed. So that's those are the things that have changed. I'm just more intentional financially for the future. And I have also realized that doing that has basically done something to me when it regards enjoying now mm -hmm. or doing now. So now I'm just like, this is not the time to enjoy. We can't do too much now. This is the thing. But at the same time, I feel like, what if Jesus comes tomorrow? What if? <laughs> and I'm keeping body for... for and it's, this is one thing that I, I ask when we're in conversations about like, you know, time frames. So the Bible says, do not be anxious about tomorrow. That we should be present in our now, you know. And it also says that the ants, they pile up food for the winter during the summer make haste while the sun shines type of thing so where's the balance and all that yeah so me i'm i'm also like what kind of living standard makes me happy right now 
what do I have to do to achieve that and still maintain a fraction for tomorrow? Mm-hmm. So that's my vibe. I will not put, I won't put 70% in tomorrow. I'll put 70% in today and 30 in tomorrow. Yeah. I think that's the difference between myself and you. I can put like 80% into tomorrow. But also because you've also been like more vocal about like your now, I've been slowly realizing that, oh my God, okay, I have to take cognizance of our now. As in not putting everything into tomorrow is enough. Because again, if I trust in God and God has said tomorrow will take care of itself, even though we should plan for tomorrow, but we shouldn't overdo it, do you get? So I just realized I need to find the balance. Yeah, but I'm always like thinking of, oh, Gabby's cool, Gabby's future. Ah, Gabby's going to have that. Ah, we need to, when we are old, we need to have enough money. Ah, we need to buy stock. Ah, <laughs> save Bitcoin. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> it sounds like those are your animes. <laughs> okay, so what would, what would ease off that anxiety? If I just get like, um, 30 billion for your account. <laughs> <laughs> Billion dollars. Billions. I just want to have plenty money at once. Then, to be honest, if I get plenty money at once, I'm still going to put a lot of it into the future. But at, at least I can be able to take a chunk and still do a now thing that will make everybody calm down. So this is a mindset thing. I mean, from the conversations we're having in church about mindsets, this is... A mindset thing. And interestingly, in the women's group, like we're talking about anxiety and, you know, how do we get a grip on our thoughts and the things that seem very like mundane when we're thinking about it, like you said, you know, get this insurance, get that one. It's just like mundane, like I I suppose, not maybe man, you know, but when does it really become like a thought that diminishes your ability to live in abundance? And how do you get a grip on that? Because whether we like it or not, it affects our marriage and the way that we relate with each other. So if I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to spend so much time with you. Let's go to the hotel and spend the night. Or let's go to this place. And let's travel. You're like, eh, 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 eh. You better go and buy elk. <laughs> I'm like, oh, babe, let's just relax and have like, you know, um, breaded prawns. You're like, you say prawns? Prawns? <laughs> yeah, that's a thought that we should consider. And like I said, I'm already considering things. I'm already re-strategizing, replanning. And I think I've done enough. Like, I've not reached my goal for, like, the future saving, you know. Um, but I think I've done enough to say, okay, can, I can do some now things. So I'm just, like, waiting for a chunk of, you know, money for us to do something that will make everybody happy. But um, I think that, you know... Living in abundance is one thing and planning for the future is another. (laughs) Is it though? (laughs) Is it though? Why are you doing like that now? Why are you doing your face like that? No, because I'm enjoying this conversation. (laughs) I'm enjoying it. It's giving, you know, therapist vibes. I'm understanding, like, I'm, I'm seeing and hearing some things from you that we don't talk about in our normal lives. Like what? So, like, you're releasing some gems, you know? I beg. Yeah, abundance and, yeah, continue. So, I think that definitely um, I got into a little bit of that trap where I began to, like, you know, get over anxious or feel like, oh, my future is solely based on how I treat it from my now. So it now became about what I do now or what I do now for us, you know, and I started fearing almost, I want to say fear, but you know how the enemy can just slide in that almost and it tweaks a bit of your alignment. You're not fully misaligned, but you're just a bit. And so in your mind, because he knows that if he takes it to full, you will clock that. No, I'm not meant to be. But that's that almost, and that almost is very dangerous mm. because it's a hard thing and it just slips in there. And I, it was in one Sunday service, I just realized that all more, all more, I need to start Rewiring. recalibrating my mm. mind, you know. I guess so with everything you've been saying, like it makes me wonder whether you're carrying on this burden alone 
So when you you say, oh, I have done this, I have done this, um, I have, you know, I, there's a lot of I in a lot of things that you've said. Is there a way that, you know, you could ease out this I to make it a we? And to, because I'm not a dollar, to involve me in the process such that, you know, you're not feeling like you're carrying this weight alone. Yeah. And if you ask me, babes, we need to make, this This still boils down to the reason why we need to have more conversations about our future goals together. To say, okay, our target is $50,000 million. That's not a number. But if we said that that was the target and both of us say, okay, this is what you contribute, this is what I contribute, this is what we, we need to team up. And so everybody, we grind, we get this done as opposed to not having any number and whatever enters the buckets, we carry it before, that kind of thing. And so you now carry all the weight of, okay, maybe in your head you're thinking a certain number and obviously the income that is coming is not reaching enough. So we're not having to inconvenience ourselves in our living and living standard. So my question is, what can we do to ease off this burden on you? Because I don't want a husband who is, thinking, work, and, oh, I am doing this all. I, I get that you're the, you're the man of the house, the breadwinner. I'm going to allow you to please be that, you know. I don't want to be carrying breadwinner with you. Mm? But how can I contribute and support you and ease off that burden? Because mm. I want us to still live like we're teenagers. Mm -hmm. When I think about our love life, I'm thinking us running by the beach Gabby somewhere, somewhere in the world with our grandma and grandpa, but us still like living our best lives together. You know, um, very important what you said about like, thank you for thinking about it that way where you're like, ah, how can I come in? Like, you know, it's a lot of eyes. So maybe you're carrying burdens that, you know, and it makes sense, you know. So, but in my head, like when I say I, it's just basically like an action, um, but because it's still for us. Like, I see doing it, like, and I'm still thinking that my I is our, our we. <laughs> so it's just basically how um, you give Gabby a bath. You, you, when you're saying, oh, I gave Gabby a bath, you can't say we gave Gabby a bath. But it's a we because we are both her parents. We've created a, an, an enabling environment for her, for her to have a bathroom and for there's lights. You know, I paid for Jane to put on the light and paid for the light bill <laughs> so you could give her she a bath. She doesn't need light so, to have a bath though, but yeah, I get you. <laughs> so in the grand scheme of things, we did it, but that particular activity was basically you. So it's the same thing. In my mind of heart, my heart of heart, it's a we because we're doing it together. It's our, like whatever money I spend is because you allowed it or you gave room for it or, you know, I don't see money as my own. You know, I can put anything in your name, to be honest. Like, I don't even care because I know you. I trust you. But like what you've said with involving you more, I think that that's something I need to do more. I need to involve you more because I don't do it enough. I just give you like broad strokes. But I think the goal should be carrying you because I think that that's also one of the things that makes, that will make you feel secure. No matter what I do, even if you have $10 billion in the account and I show you, you may not feel secure yep. until you are aware, fully aware of in information the in the process. And I, I clocked that when I heard a YouTube video of a couple. And I was just like, oh, even if there's no money in the account, if a woman is carried along in the process, she feels secure. I couldn't get it. I was just like, I thought security is when you know there's plenty of money. No, but we've had this conversation so many times. <laughs> but where hearing I it from another woman, an older well... woman, I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's the process. It's the communication yeah. in betweens. It's the, oh, there's money. Now we can do this. Oh, there's no money. Let's hold on. She just feels like she's inside. She's there. She's doing it. So she's cool. She understands. Yeah. But when she doesn't understand, even though she knows... Even though she knows, but she doesn't understand, she doesn't feel secure. Ooh. So I think that's the point. You need to understand. And secondly, I saw another, um, you know, video post where, you know, the husband and wife said, the father, the man, takes care of the needs of the home. So he takes care of all the needs, the bills that need to be paid, the house bill, 
uh, light bill, school fees. The wife takes care of all the wants. We want to go for, uh, we want to buy Versace, the wife. We want to go for travel, the wife. We want to, the father just takes care of the needs, clothing, school fees. That's the big, the major the things. Basics. But those wants, she handles. And I'm just like, you know what? Maybe till we get to rebalance again, maybe that's something we could look into. Um, get money, let's travel. <laughs> totally. <laughs> just be like, baby, we're leaving next week. <gasps> Do we? A surprise destination. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'll ball out. I'm never going to lie. Are you serious? Hmm. Mm. But I have to still disconnect from my future because I'm just like... <gasps> Do you know, because in my mind, I will still think about what I'm we really can do with that money. I'm feeling it. I will still be thinking of, ah, should we create house fund since there is money now? <laughs> no, I, I think, so remember the times where we even talked about, um, every time you said, oh, babe, we have this in this account. And I'm like, my guy, no, we need to sit down and actually, I think creating a routine where we actively discuss our finances um, not just even pulling me in the process of, oh, this is what we have, or this, or, no, I want to know how we get it. I want to know um, how it's distributed. I want to be part of that process. I want to know um, when and the periods, because we're looking for periodical income and the kind of life we live, um, the kind of work we do, we do it's not like um, a nine to five, it's exactly. A, it's not yeah. structured. So I'm thinking like these things are important to me and it's great that we can move forward. Oh, by the way, we've actually attempted our first family meeting. Actually, the second family meeting, the two have been um, a disaster. But it's, they, I read the video, you know, it's, it's, it's supposed to happen until we kind of like get, you know, all the foggy cobwebs in our conversations, get all those things dusted out. Because for a long time, we haven't really like sat to have conversations about the important things in our marriage. Yeah. So. I think it's definitely important for people to try and figure out how to have a family meeting. Um, because I've always known the trick to having a marriage, having the understanding how the marriage works, basically, because I realized that when I heard marriage is the first institution God created. It, for years, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but one day just clocked institution. What is an institution? It's a, it's a company. It's a mm. corporate organization. And when he says man is the husband, it's basically MD. You're just the one heading the ship. Mm. Just like the same way an MD will head the company in a company. But yeah, that just hit me like, ooh, okay, I see. You know, So outside of marriage, man and woman are equal. In marriage, MD is the head. Not that you're not equal. Your colleagues in your office with your MD. But MD gets to make the final decision on most of the... Oh, yes, he can listen to somebody and say, you know what, we're doing, we're going with your way. You know, one day, I was just like, oh, I see. Because I was just like, ah, planning things in marriage is... Ah, Long. So, so randy. Randy. But, yeah, I was just, that was how I was like, oh, it should be like, everything just flowing. Just like, Spontaneous. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Spontaneity drives me crazy. Spontaneity drives you crazy. Oh, my God. But then it... It makes sense now that in a company you should make you should have meetings. Like it used to be icky, like meeting. You will sit down, start uh, doing agenda. But yes, if it's a institution, if it's a corporate organization, then yes, carry your colleagues along. This is the plan. What do you think? Everybody. So I was just like, makes sense. So yeah, we'll try. We'll keep trying mm -hmm. for family meetings where we can all do it right and hopefully find that balance because all more. It has been but I think, wild. I think even the second one was even better. It's, than, yeah, <laughs> better than the first, was it? Yeah, I think so. We got more in. Yeah, we got more in. I think the more we do it, the better. I think we'll probably get a rhythm by the sixth meeting. Hmm? It, hopefully. He said that hopefully. I'm always optimistic. So third, fourth. Oh, really? You know. I feel like it's still a lot bottled up, you know? Still need to <laughs> let it all out. <laughs> You can go and let it all out with Jesus. Let all your flaps hang in with Jesus. Let it not, go. Let it go. Not with me. So, um, how do you think parenting has affected finance for you? Do you think of Gabby's future? Do you spend more? I think you spend more because of Gabby now. Yeah. I think that that has really... You can yeah. just be like, look, I'm buying books. 
<laughs> yeah, I think since she was born, um, aside from like the little gifts that we got here and there for her, um, I've mostly taken care of her diapers, mostly. You've taken care of her Clothing, everything. books, toys, things that just, I see that as like, ah, Gabby needs this, you know. Every time I go in a store, I always buy something for her, even if it's like a bubble toy or something that I know that would just light up her mood. Or yogurt. Uh, <laughs> yogurt. Uh, having a baby is expensive, but it's never been a burden to me. And I'm grateful to God for that, giving me the ability to even like splodge on my child. Constantly updating her books. Look, books are expensive. Clothes, shoes. Shoes are expensive. Birthday shoots. I remember I spent close to about 60K on just like dresses and this is not just me trying to be doing the most i was in that store negotiating and pricing like a market woman, <laughs> you know but it's just stuff that we know it needs to be done it happens once in a year so yeah. it needs to be done and so yeah i've had to spend on myself as well because of my change in size <laughs> i've gone from a size six to a size eight to a size 10 to a size eight and back to a six and <laughs> you know like i thought that okay once i'm in size eight size 10 that i will stay that size for a while but to my behold i became a size six eight very quickly and i was too hasty in selling off my small size clothes or my size six clothes because i thought i wouldn't be that size anymore and so now i have to buy them back and obviously economy is different so spending 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 i think that um first off hats off to you you've done an amazing phenomenal job raising gabby i have to first say that i always knew though that you were going to be a star mom like a star star but you have taken star to the next level like you're not a star in the night you are the freaking sun like, thank you thank you well done also yeah like when i saw that you have that on lockdown i was just like <laughs> make her just free I mean, let her do because Claire knows what to get Gabby. Like, I can get into a baby store. I remember those times that I went to the store to shop for her. And my brain nearly exploded. I had to have Claire on video. I had to have, like, just tell me what to pick. What is the freaking number? I need to do exactly because <laughs> I see something. I don't know how you guys do it. You see something, you know it's her size. <laughs> I'm like... This is my baby size. They're like, no, that was her size like 10 months years, ago. 10 years ago. I'm like, here we enter her. <laughs> you know? So that's really funny. But you have that on lockdown. Something that I actually now got to clock on was actually fathers and the role of fathers and the role of men in the home is not to do too much with the children, especially in the beginning stages, like things like this. I mean, there are dads that they got this on lockdown. That's fine. But I feel like for most homes, what works is you pour into the mom, you pour into the wife, you give the wife and then she then gives off herself to the family. I think that that system can work where I pour into you and then you pour into So how do you pour Gabby. into me? Um, that's a whole different conversation. Hmm. Because but I, think I think that that's the system it should be. I give you love, give you care, give you TLC, give you money, and then you then just i don't agree when so if because the truth is if we're not happy with each other it will affect your relationship with gabby i don't agree i think that <gasps> a lot of mothers that haven't gotten support in raising a child have eventually channeled all their love and attention to their child and then their marriage just suffers from that so what you want to do yeah, as marriage, a husband how- Wait, sorry, sorry. So once the wife gets to a point where it feels like she's not getting the support from the husband, right, in raising the kids, do not that will be giving me TLC. Mm-mm. Go down, change the diapers, you know, bait the child when I'm tired. She starts getting some sort of resentment towards the husband that will now make her want to pour all her love and attention on a child which would directly affect the marriage, you know, yeah, you, know, yeah. you know, so it's not becomes like, I prefer my child to my husband because this man is just unserious. <laughs> I think that, you know, I'm talking of in general scope because the truth is when you're tired, I step in like, with, it's, it's not even, do you have anything to say about that? Yeah, I do. I think that there's been sometimes, and it's not to like say, oh, you're not an amazing dad. There's been times when I've been really exhausted But I also see that you have to go out. So I have to make those. There are times where I'm the only one in the house. I'm ill. I still have to be a mommy. 
Yeah. You know, I saw a video on social media of a mommy that was sleeping on a couch and was about rolling off the couch and then the toddler came and tried to push the mom back on. I watched it and I was almost being very judgmental. Like what kind of mommy would be leaving the child to be taking care of her in that scenario? But I remember there were times where I was so ill, but I still had to like get up, bathe Gabby, feed Gabby and you know there could be somebody that could probably have been in a worse situation that just could not get up. What do they do when they don't have support or assistance in that scenario? So this is a situation of like... But I think the scenarios we're talking about is where I'm home because you cannot count situations where I'm out or I'm not home. Like I'm talking mm. about like the situation where we just talked about. Like if the man is home, mm. you pick up the slack. Like you have to do it. So like, that's a man that is feed- actively looking to see where there is need so yeah, you could be you home can, but not feed be the present baby. you can feed the baby give her baths help her do homework when you can play with her when mommy needs to sleep don't go into the room mommy's sleeping those are the things that you can take her up for fun activities drives i mean and i think that fathers need to find special things that they can do with their children i found one recently because swimming wasn't working out but i found one recently what is it i'm not saying okay <laughs> so i think to just buttress your point um because you started off saying that leaving yeah. women to sort of handle that situation which is what i didn't agree with that's why i went on no, that that's not what i said to that's sort not, of like allowing you so you said allowing the women to kind of own that beginning of a child's upbringing that's pretty much what you said so what i meant was when you pour into your wife it's easier for her to pour into the children and so i'm saying that let's both be pouring into the children yeah yeah, yeah definitely. from the very start yeah which is you know when we had gabby you would bathe gabby you know i saw you bathe gabby you didn't do well with night work <laughs> right because you you're not a night person like that you were not a night person so just finding a balance to sort of like be in support in every way that the woman needs support so if she's like babes i can't be waking up tonight i want three nights off or can you just you know and you actually just step in fact sometimes i think some women will not want to say you know because they've fully taken up all the responsibility by themselves and everything they are doing so the husbands need to be sensitive to see their wife's reaction you see your wife is actually being antsy or snappy she's stressed so you don't have to sit and wait for her to say um babes how can i support you (laughs) just pick up the broom you know like literally just get into it and sometimes once there's a couple that was talking about like when the husband goes to work nine to five and comes back he immediately handles the baby so we can't say oh his nine to five is different from what she's been doing at home they've both been doing a nine to five and guess what it's harder to be moving around the house taking care of a person taking care of yourself than to be sitting by a desk if that is the kind of work that you're doing so that bodily stress as trying some men that would have done that nine to five then come back home and be expected the woman to be giving him sugar sugar in the bedroom she's not gonna have the strength or emotional capacity too, you know. So I think with every family, you just need to find a balance and just understanding that the entire process of building a family is really pulling your weight and giving your 100 doesn't necessarily always mean 50-50. So if what you're bringing to the table is, how do I explain this now? But do you understand what I mean? Like I it's not it. 50-50. Like it could be 70-30, but that 30 that you're doing is actually your 100 at that very moment. And it has to make sense. Yeah. Yeah, scheme, yeah, ex- like the act, it should try to lead to the running of the home smoothly. Exactly. But what did you mean by night when you said I wasn't a night? Didn't so there were many times I had to like wake up in the middle of the night to change her diaper, feed her. She's crying. I wake up like you will not hear when Gabby is crying. <laughs> You're sleeping throughout your night. So when I had Gabby, like my sensitivity was really heightened. If she just does, I'm awake. Right, so... There were times when she didn't make a noise and you would wake up. And yeah, and, I, and as I'm arriving, she's just... So there was all that. <laughs> I'm telling you because I would notice that food is every four hours at a certain time. And my body clock just wakes up at those mm. hours 
to check and make sure that she gets the food. If she refuses the food, fine, but I, I've woken up. And then even when she grew up to become like a one-year-old, six o'clock was the time that I was still sort of like wake up. Even now, once Gabby opens the door, to come and say good morning, my I already wake up. Good morning, Gabby. Right? So I don't wait for her to, I don't know. I'm just different. It's just our body is different. And I wouldn't necessarily have been this way where, I remember there was a time I was always having headaches because of the way I used to wake up very quickly i wouldn't necessarily have been that way if you were night a like me like if we could ease off that i don't think this has anything to do with me that's how you are uh, you were before you really entered. that's how you've always been i would have loved to I, I don't know marriage. i just think like i would have loved to really have nights off when i had gabby like mm-hmm. just completely like that i'll be able to sleep through the night and not worry but it's not possible for <laughs> any mother in the world is it <laughs> <laughs> never but i did all the days i dropped gabby off with my mom uh uh-uh, that's later on now yeah, when she had gotten on. older we're talking of the essential Ellie, Ellie. but even those essential please i beg i was there i you give were, i didn't say you were not there i now. give you it, tried your best but a father might not hear the cry <laughs> because like mothers are so sensitive until the baby's like like uh, what's happening oh there's a baby oh really <laughs> <laughs> you know but like you were saying you know body changes those have happened my body has changed since gabby yeah you had a daddy belly i did have a daddy belly it was, like i was pregnant it was so cute but it's going it's going is it and i bless the lord so i've been working out i've just been feeling like you know i want gabby to look at her dad and be like yes my daddy looks good but not even like look good but basically like this is the way a man is meant to look really is this yes. the way a man is meant to look let's not go into toxic masculinity excuse me so that because she there's knows some really what skinny fit, guys. so that she knows what a fit healthy man should look at look like is healthy looking in a certain way and habits workout habits because soon gabby will soon start going to the gym with me she will start working hallelujah out. Oh, glory oh. <laughs> <laughs> but like you said you you fluctuate but you mentioned something about you know your body changes coming back to number six i don't think that was because you were meant to i think it's because you fell ill really seriously twice yeah but when we look at like the ladies in my family we're not like big my elder sister was showing me her clavicle recently and it's she's losing weight too it's just mm. we're very small size i wouldn't say so small size it's slender yeah slender base slim women but i know that's enjoyment premium enjoyment if i'm living on the standard that i should be living i will be fleshy <laughs> i will be i promise you <laughs> Please, but you know what standards are you talking we're about we're making do right now clarify you know once we enter into this need once let's just go there <laughs> Claire. You handle the needs, I handle the wants. We haven't made a decision yet. At the end of the day, I think having a baby changes everybody. It changes us. It changes the dynamics. It's changed our dynamic, even our work dynamic. For a while, I stopped taking work for the first three months of when Gabby was born. You also had to find that rhythm of getting back into work with Gabby and making things work. And I, I think that's why support systems are really, really needed when a baby comes in at first. But now, um, you know... <sighs> Myself, I can rest more because once I just see that nanny is around, dear nanny, go and give her a bath. I'm not there, you know. Um, but I think that having a child changes your mind, your yeah. spirit, your body. I pray more because of Gabby. I pray for her like with my whole soul, with my whole heart. And uh, to be honest, I'm afraid that sometimes I pray because I don't want the world to get to her. I saw a video where they asked a child molester, why did you molest? What made you choose this particular girl from another girl? So that she wasn't getting attention. She no. lacked attention. No. What? He said the most important reason why he would choose a child over another child is if he sees her father is not a threat wow 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 and boom it just like it just made sense like in my head like the role of a father is so much more than even also what he does at home and just marking territory is very important and i I think i'm gonna put out a video about it like maybe reaction video to it but you see this thing called toxic masculinity i feel like yes there's toxic masculinity but there's a place for why a man is a man a man is different and a place for a man being a threat 
to whoever because it is needed in our society nowadays where children are targeted for everything. Children are targeted in ads for commerciality. Children are targeted for sex. Children are targeted for sex change. Children are... I mean, look at that Balenciaga campaign. It's crazy what's happening in the world now. I think that that's why it's not really about the way man looks. And that's why I said that toxic masculinity. It's not about how you look. And just like we were saying before, you would pray for your child. And so I'm, I've never really felt any anxiety about how, you know, her going into the world. Because when I pray for her, I pray strength into her because that's what her name is first. She embodies and carries the strength of God. I pray for covering for her. I pray that she's light in darkness because that's what this world is. World, but darkness everywhere. So the covering is to protect her from all that because we have a lot of there are men that are not gene bodies or yeah. cannot be physically a threat but can be spiritually a, tra a threat because the pedophile is a demonic attack yeah and it's not just spiritual but also like spiritual yes most important but also what i mean by being a threat is not by being macho okay. but by being present present yeah being there like you have to be seen yeah you have to mark your territory exactly you have to be heard one who sees that the father is not always there doesn't care he's just living life anyhow drinking out doing everything that's the child they're going to choose. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And so fathers need to be present. Very interesting because I remember when I was choosing a school for Gabby and I always was like, babes, you have to come with me. On the very first day of our crash, crash, even as simple as crash, we went together. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, we have to do this thing together. As much as I can easily do it myself, there's a place of ensuring that you're involving your partner in some things right yeah. and so we had to make that decision okay you drop gabby i pick gabby whichever way it works they need to see that she has a father you know as much as you're the celebrity and you want to avoid being seen all the time but i'm like look she's your child first and in priority that comes yeah. first and so yeah. i don't Aka think that was really ever, i don't think that was ever an issue like it was not yeah. even a discussion i was the one who said i want to take her to school every day because i was just like first of all it was for me for my own happiness but i also love the fact that you see because it's fine when like all oh, the female teachers are outside picking children from school but i realized that men are also there too i'm not going to lie i'm not yes i'm spiritual i love god that fear hits sometimes when i'm just like a man is the one taking my daughter Oh yeah, it's okay. It's blessed. So you get an Ankara inside. Yeah, but like you know how you were the one who said, "Oh, let them. She needs it." You that know, was to the go initial in. start. So when mm. I drop and her, because all parents just drop at the gates. No. They go when I in. drop her, sometimes I go in with her. I tell them, "Don't worry. I want to see her teacher." Yeah. Because I always have things I want to clarify. I'm like, "Okay, why did this happen the day before?" You know. So seeing them, I think even when we're doing our first PTA meeting, I was like you know, show up, we go together. First of all, this is in no allude, like we are not alluding anything to anybody or the school or no, the that does, teachers. That, like, I don't think We're that. not saying that you're, you're bad. I'm just, it's not from you, it's from me. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't, we didn't insinuate anything. Yeah. I just, I just, it's just where the parents come in. A lot of men, just like you said, like would prefer to be not so involved in that. In I school. think it was convenient also for you to be the one who would drop her because i'm already i'm still in my night where i just finished rushing to get her food pack her bag make sure she's brushed check her teeth check her hair i'm doing all those things obviously when you're not around i still have to find a way to do all those things and still drop her but it's just it, it gets me a minute to just breathe because immediately i wake up that she's the first thing on my mind and I've wanted a routine where I wake up and just like sit with myself, sit with yeah. my feelings, get all that. But I don't have the opportunity that mm -hmm. you have. So I'm just like, okay, let's do it that way. <laughs> While everybody has left the house, I can just like now say, ha, ah, you know, but so yeah. Like you said, we've come to the end of this discussion. This first episode, how parenting, having a baby, having Gabby has changed a couple of things in dynamic. We didn't talk about everything. Yeah, I don't think, in fact, it's very difficult to even have a topic for this episode. I think that, you know, it's great that we're just sort of bouncing stuff off on each other and people are going to learn from that. The entirety of it is our lifestyle has changed. 
the lifestyle of being parents now, the things that we really wanted for ourselves before we we're parents. To be honest, there's been some feelings, and you know, when people ask, Oh, when are you gonna have another child? There's some feelings that I feel that you can't ask me that, you know, and because I'm still going through this and it's a lot, you know, having a child is a lot. And so I think in conclusion, the advice to newly married couples, there's a lot to think about before you have a child. There's a lot to resolve. There's a lot of understanding your role in a family. Because if you don't get first off this wife thing and then you enter a mother thing, it's you're going to intensify your learning period and bro, it's not easy. I wouldn't even say that I figured anything out first before I did anything because I think part of the reasons why I was eager to have Gabby or that I felt that I was ready was because I actually felt lonely even being here with you, you know? So there were gaps in my own life that I felt like, okay, maybe if I'm busy with a child would fill that gap, but there is no gap that a child can fill. And just understanding that you and your partner are first the primary team members of your family, primary. So if you're not understanding how to work together, having a, an additional person in the team is just another ball game on its own and so build that friendship build a relationship just like Aka said in the beginning like this is an institution put structure around your family so that when a new team member comes they settle into a structure and they're not settled into such disarray and instability so yeah no topic for this video <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we just they talk <laughs> Anyways, guys, this is the end of this episode. Um, we're going to be coming back again. So please check us out on Instagram at Aka and Claire. And you can check our individual pages, Aka Nani and Claire, Claire Idara. Idara. We're also on threads. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, we're on threads. <laughs> And we're having fun there. But I think that it will do you a lot of good to check out our Instagram pages. And, you know, thanks for eavesdropping. And see you again in the next episode. Bye. Ciao.